welcome to Rootshell Security's latest tech talk. In this episode, we're going to be talking about some of the, the tools um, which we use in red team assessments to gain physical entry or help us to socially engineer our, um, our physical ingress, if you like, into a target organization's physical premises, building or physical assets. Now, I must warn everybody that these tools and techniques um, are always carried out legally and ethically within the bounds of um, a scope which is agreed with the client, i.e. permission. How we utilise these tools has taken years um, of practice, if you like, and, and gaining that technical knowledge. Therefore, you should not practice any of uh, these activities that we're going to demonstrate potentially in some of these tools unless you have complete permission from the owner. OK, so what are we talking about when we say physical security? Well, it's about ring fencing and protecting your central assets, your crock or gold, if you like. Think of it as an onion with multiple layers, with obviously the inner core being your asset, which is protected. From the outside going in, let's call out some physical security measures. So we're talking things like fences, security lighting, CCTV, security guards, building fabric, doors, locks, access control, airlocks, turnstiles, alarm systems, pedestrian herding, privilege access rights, fences, alarms and gates, oh my, the list really does go on. But I tell you what, let's have a look at some of these tools and some of these devices that we, um, we use when we're actually deploying on physical security assessments. Okay, so thanks for joining us over here at the Root Shell labs. What we're going to do now is basically just go through some of the tooling that we utilise whilst performing red team engagements, especially on the physical ingress sort of assessments. So before we even get anywhere close to a premises, we often find that there's quite a lot of information that's passing over the air. Now I'm not talking about your Wi-Fi 2.4 or 5 gigahertz sort of, you know, Wi-Fi technology. We're talking about radio frequency devices, things like, you know, um, remote operated sort of gates, alarm systems, certain doors could be activated by a key fob. There's a number of things that we can actually look for. Now potentially there are some attacks that can be formed against some of the more lesser secure sort of RF technologies that don't tend to use you know one-time keys or um, things like rolling codes etc. So we, there's a thing called a replay attack but initially we need to identify that these things exist so we can use something called an SDR or a or software defined radio and once you obviously you've identified the frequency you can actually see that chirp that radio burst we can then use something called the hack RF which we can then perform things like replay attacks. Had some great success with these particular gadgets, especially when replaying um, sequences to disarm alarm systems or performing a jam against the sensor so it doesn't actually set an alarm off. So really good, really interesting kit. There's lots of interesting stuff on the internet if you wanted to find out a bit more. As we get a bit closer, the other thing we like to do is also keep an eye out for things like hidden cameras. We often find that there's hidden wireless cameras get uh, embedded into certain walls, obviously. You always say walls have ears and eyes. But what we like to do is obviously have that, that capability where we can ultimately detect it. So we have something here which is an RF scanner, and this particular scanner works up to 6 gigahertz. Um, and just by turning it on, you actually get, obviously, a strength indicator and it also vibrates depending on um, what it can find, what it can see within its range. So what I'll do here, essentially, we've got um, a bug. It's, a, it's an RF bug. This works in the ISM 433 sort of uh, megahertz range. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll just plonk that down there. And what I'll do is I'll turn on the scanner, but you'll see that there's, um, there's no detection there at the moment. So if I turn this RF bug on, you can see instantly you actually get a positive read on that. So these devices are really, really helpful, especially when we're looking to detect hidden devices which may compromise us. As we get closer, obviously, to a physical building, we're going to encounter things like doors, locks, padlocks, and various other locking mechanisms. Now, these can come in two different flavors. 
One is mechanical, therefore you need a key, or it can be electronic access control, which you might be familiar with, which is using things like, you know, the HID or the MyFair or the MyFair Classics or the cards. So if you come across obviously a physical lock, there's a number of things that we keep in our toolbox, and that is obviously tool picks. Um, and essentially you, you can have things like picking a lock, slipping a lock, raking a lock. Um, there's a number of ways obviously that you can obviously try to compromise a lock. Um, we have great success at this. Obviously we're looking at mortars, mortise locks, euro locks. We've had various different successes gaining access into um, other areas, which then obviously progressed our assessment using these types of tools. The other things we can use is something called a snap gun and also things called bump keys. Um, there's plenty of information on the internet about these. We've got a different sets of different bump keys for different sort of cylinder pins and also different lengths and key sets. But they're always form part of the attack kit when we're going out doing assessments against locks, etc. Some more tools that we, uh, we always carry with is our shims. So if you've got a padlock, for example, and you want to use um, something other than a lock, you've had no success, there is the potential that you can actually shim a lock. This particular padlock here has got a long high shackle and it doesn't have any protective shroud, so therefore this is potentially vulnerable to a shim attack. All the types of locks I talked about was electronic access control. Um, you're probably quite familiar with, with HID and various other different types of technology that exist. Some are encrypted, some are more vulnerable than others. Um, as you can see here, I've got a number of cards that I have. I always carry with me, um, essentially, so I can do cloning. Um, we could do incremental attacks as well, because normally it just relies on the card serial number. So by using devices such as, as card readers and programmers, we can then actually progress a number. So I've been on jobs where I was able to obtain a key sequence of a card number, then I was able just to rewrite the card, sequence it and incrementing it by one until eventually I gained access as an admin to a data room. Um, card cloning, I say I will just show you that one device. This is something that I made myself. It's something like a book and the idea was to have it less conspicuous. Um, and the idea is I've got some gubbings in there. You can see the RF antenna tucked away down there. I've got the actual cloning buttons there to energize the circuit. And the idea is, I would just have the target card, which would be in range, and I would just clone the card and walk away. Then I could replay that against a blank card, if you like, to then become a complete copy of the original. There are other things that you can use, obviously, other than those cards. There's things like tokens. These work pretty much the same way. Um, I've defeated alarm systems where people have used these tokens to tab in and out or arm or disarm alarm systems. These will be unencrypted, working again off serial numbers. And just by simply cloning them and then rewriting them to a writable card, you can then obviously utilise them against the system to um, de disarm it. Um, other things that we use in the job as well are swipe cards. So we have like swipe card readers and we've got swipe card riders. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of um, sort of credit card size cards there with a magnetic stripe on the back. Lots of information gets put onto those, but ultimately we're able to clone those as well. Other keys that we carry are things like cabinet locks. So we get different types of um, cabinets that we come across. So essentially we can utilize these to gain access. There's been a number of mobile telco sort of companies that we've worked for looking at compromise points um, and various other sort of providers which obviously utilize these locked cabinets. One of my more favorite devices that I've utilized on um, certain jobs is the snake camera. And this is a great bit of kit if you need to obviously look behind a door, look through a wall, or basically you know have a small access into a cabinet and you want to know what actually resides within. So this particular device is great. You've got obviously a nice camera, it's HD with lights, and you can really get a good perspective on things, um, especially if something's through a wall, like I say, or you're trying to get through to the other side just to have a work out where's what and what's happening. I'm going to wrap up right there now um, and look forward, obviously, to our next tech talk. In fact, I almost forgot, for those of you asking where Bertie is, well, here he is, he's back. Until next time, I'm out of here. Bye.